I'm going to go see Sullivan King. He's one of the um, more interesting acts that have emerged over the past five, six years. WMMS and Two Hours of Midnight, our metal show presenting Sullivan King on the Chaos Will Bring Peace Tour. If you know, you know. Um, This is a guy who combines a lot of metal with a lot of electronic stuff. He does a lot of collabs with bands. He was the opener on the Avenged Sevenfold Tour earlier this year. Maybe you saw that one. He's coming back here Monday, February 10th. He's going to play the Agora. You can go to agoracleveland.com for all the info. This pair for you, two for Sullivan King. I'm sure he's got people with him. 216-578-1007 or 800-348-1007. Yeah, it seems a little unfair that you can watch our live stream, but we can't see you. But we'll fix that tonight. Outside your window. The Alan Cox Show. On 100.7 WMMS. Well, I'm going to try to hit it on time this time. Been hitting these keywords late. We've been, uh, oh, just getting all up in everybody's business. So just a couple of minutes for that next keyword. Every hour, about 30 past, you get uh, one of them. Give you $1,000, courtesy of the Buzzard Bookie. Starts in the morning with RMG. Stansbury's got them. And then I give them to you. Your last one uh, will be around 530 Cavs basketball tonight. They are 3-0, and off to a good start so far. They're in New York to play the Knicks. That is a 7.30 tip-off tonight. Your pregame on MMS will get going about 30 minutes prior. LeBron and the Lakers in town on Wednesday. And then the – who's that? And then the um, uh, Magic will be in town. That is Shaquille O'Neal and the Orlando Magic. Who's on the magic now? Oh, uh, what's that guy's name? What is that guyy's name? Thomas O'Malley. Well, there's, there's. I'm Thomas the Vag- O'Malley for your sh- your Orlando Magic. There's the, I think the Wagner brothers are on there. The Wagner Mo, brothers. Mo, and then uh, what's his name? He's he's very good. Uh, you you give. It- Jet Howard. No. Tristan De Silva. No. Paolo Banchero. That guy. Paolo. Paolo ben- Sure. I didn't think that was the one that was going to hit. He's Paolo Banchero. Yeah, he's great. I think that's the brand of salsa that we get at our house. Well, good for him. See, really people good. are already mad at Tom Brady. What are you doing? Because he used a shocking slur to describe Josh Allen, the Buffalo Bills. Honky. Shocking slur. Come did on. Did he say honky? Man. No, he didn't oh. say honky. Cracker? What did he say? This is network television. He's not going to say anything that's going to shock. Anyone, but I'll play it for you. You communicate to everybody and integrate new players becomes a great challenge for a quarterback like Josh, who has really lit the league on fire since he's been in. Sometimes he played like a spaz, like a great schooler on a sugar high. <laughs> but now That's it? he's controlled the chaos. Spaz the is the shocking the slur, Bill. Remember Beyonce got bodied for this a couple of years ago? She had spaz yeah. in one of her songs. Uh, about going down on her. Um, I what was the name of that song? Uh, was, she's she's all the hot and bothered in that song, and Beyonce had to change the lyrics because she was spaz because it's a shocking slur to the differently abled. I'd say, listen, if you're going to rank the slurs, I think spaz is probably some near somewhere low, near the bottom. Yeah. It's going to be very very low, but it makes for good clickbait to uh, pretend that because some people tweeted about Tom Brady, that it is a shocking, shocking, it's sickening, someone says, that that word is even in his vocabulary. Now, Bill, do you think those people are liberal or conservative? Just, I didn't say that there weren't liberals that do this. Of course okay. they're liberals, but saying. who cares? Just saying. But, but it's not, you're not making the saying. point you're making I because it's on, it's on both sides. Okay. I don't think I was really aware other than you're Tom right. Brady and Beyonce two or three years ago. I, I never hear spaz. There's a band called the Spasmatics. I don't know that anyone's, I, I think that's a franchise band though, right? Aren't yeah, they in multiple cities? Are they in multiple cities? Yeah, yeah, there's like, hey, there's Cleveland and then there's the Orlando one, something like that. 
But I don't know that anybody's been climbing up their ass to change their name. It's derived from spastic, I assume, which is an actual condition, an actual spasms, right? It's an actual thing. It's not slang or, I mean, it is spaz is slang, but it's derived from something that is medical in nature. Hello, Nate. Hey, how you doing? <clears throat> What's going on, Nate? Not too much. I was just, I was listening when I got in my truck and uh, obviously you're openly liberal. Um, you're a smart guy. I'm just curious, did you see the Joe Rogan interview with Trump? I heard about it. I know that they got a, a lot of eyes and ears on that. It's long, It's it's, but it's worth watching. It just, I'm, I just, but how? I've never seen. Yeah, give me, give me like the, a couple of high points, Nate. Because I, I, I we already know a lot about Trump. Answered. Right, and I know people don't like him, but I, I feel like he's got the right ideas in his head. Well, and, give me, give me a couple. I'm always curious. Um, well, what's going on now isn't working out. Okay, but give uh, me a uh, couple I'm examples, Nate. He, he, but he answered every question he was asked. I just, he's never coherently answered a single thing. I mean, I like coherence, you know, Nate. In, in, in a guy, you know, people judge nations by the aptitude of their leaders. And I, that's something everybody can understand. You know, Mel Gibson is out there saying that Kamala Harris has a low IQ. Now, I don't think anybody gives a fat frog's ass about Mel Gibson. But objectively, no one looks at Kamala Harris, uh, given her accomplishments and her length of time in public service, and says that she has a low IQ. No one really believes that. It's a slur, and it's an I insult. Think, I don't think so either. Well, I didn't say you did. I'm just I saying that there are people who, so when you say he made some good points, I'm curious what a couple of those are. Everything. I, I just, Everything. I like, but this is a this is a long. <laughs> well, this is a long. Uh, Joe Rogan only, does does long shows, right? So they're all long. They're all three hours three plus. Hours, right? yeah. yeah, three hours plus. I don't think she could. I don't think she could sit down for three hours with him. Now, why don't and, you think that, Nate? Because she, I haven't seen her answer a single question about policy about anything. She's yet. answered all of them. She You're watching the wrong the thing. She's she, answering the wrong things. You think what, what's a what's your favorite Trump? policy answer um well one the border i would like i i think that's getting out of well the border is not an answer i'm not a real political guy i i don't i don't favor a side but i know i'm gonna vote for donald trump well then you do you just said you favor a side because we then how come typically i don't i'm saying some we need something to change how come he didn't do anything when he was the president last time to the border he had four years nate uh, well, he started building a wall. And by the way, he voted against the plan to take care of all that. It was a bipartisan bill, and he told just, the GOP I to just, tank like it. Like I said, I I can't, you know, understand how people just, I mean, just because you don't like somebody. It's but they not, have, it's not, not we're intention. talking about that. It's we're not, not talking that. about that. We're talking about differences in policy. Nobody's talking about who they like right. or who they don't like. People are voting very much for his personality. They're not voting for his policies. You haven't. You said you watch. So. I think. I think. Then that, give me your favorite policy. Do something different. I told you, I'm not political. I'm just okay. saying he's gonna do something. Why but didn't he last time? Yeah, why did he more years of this. Why did he not last time? I don't know. I, I made a lot more money when he was president than I do now. And what do you do for a living? Cheaper. I make more money now than I did then. I'm so. an electrician. Yeah. Commercial electric. All I know is that my 401k has gone through the roof in the last couple of years. So I'll... Okay, listen, uh, Nate, I got to let you go, but I appreciate the call, pal. All right, you guys have a good one. Okay, you, you too. Thanks, Nate. The, let me it, give you this money here. Yeah, I, I swore I'd be on it on time, and I'm not. It's $1,000 from the Buzzard Bookie. Good luck. This is your chance to bet with the Buzzard Bookie and win $1,000 now. Enter this nationwide keyword at WMMS.com. Deposit. That's deposit. Enter it now at WMMS.com. Hey, Brett. Yes. What's up, man? I'm not too much. How are you doing? Good. 
Yes, Brad. Doing fine. What's up with you? Oh, yes. Uh, the, the word spaz, you were talking about it earlier, about how it's like maybe not that offensive. Well, uh, no, I, I, I'm uh, saying I'm saying if you were to rank slurs, spaz would surely be near the bottom. I, I'm, well, I'm not so sure. It kind of depends on where you live. Um, over in the U.K., um, the word spaz is like short for like spasticated which is pretty much on par with, like, calling somebody, like, a retard or calling somebody a tard. I guess calling a tard would be this more similar to spaz, you know what I mean? Um, so while it doesn't really bother me, per se, uh, or, or from what I can tell, many Americans, um, you know, there's more people on the planet other than just us Americans, so it can be quite offensive to some people. No, and no one's denying that. I'm simply saying that it doesn't rise to the level of calling a black person the N-word, as a matter of fact. Well, absolutely not. But I think, you know, if you're the family member or a brother or a sister or a parent of somebody, um, you know, with those developmental disabilities, uh, it may not be as bad as you say as some of those other words, the N-word, but that doesn't mean that it's not going to, you know, sting a little bit. I just Uh, thought it was funny that the headline, I thought it was funny that the headline in a British paper, by the way, Brett, the British paper was the one that, yeah, that said the, the shocking, shocking slur. I just don't even hear that all that often. So, I mean, listen, Tom Brady's a guy in his mid-40s, so he's probably going to pull out the stuff he remembers. But uh, thank you, Brett. I appreciate the call. Hey, it just occurred to me, with Mary leaving, the biggest concern I have is how are we going to find out what is in her storage locker? from her mom (laughs) not that i'm wishing ill will believe me i'm not but we have to have something in place to to let us know hate the show bye that's very funny that is on the top of her mind you've you've thrown this out there and now there's going to have to be eventually when your mom passes um there's going to have to be some culmination of that whole thing yeah you're going to have to check back in of course we'll probably be long gone but um well yeah that's my mom i uh for, i don't know who's not on knows what's going on but my mom is a hoarder and she's kept things i guess from each of her kids lives or things that she thinks we would like and she has five different storage units that she is willing to us once she dies but she won't tell us where they are so it's kind of going to be like a treasure hunt <laughs> once she dies of where do we get how do we get our stuff so maybe, yeah, if you guys are still on, I'll come on that day and be like, hey, I'll, maybe I'll bring some items. Maybe I'll do a live auction. Only if mm-hmm. it's not anticlimactic. If it's a bunch of crap, who cares? I'm sure right. it wouldn't. It's not going to be a bunch of crap. How it, do you know? When this finally <laughs> happens. You don't know. <laughs> yeah. Well, this... you it also could be gold and treasure. Yes. And also might and not riches. happen for 30 more years. That, right. We'll be long gone. 63 or something. Yep. Like no, she's older than that. 57. 1957. So she's... Oh, she's not 57. She was born in 1957. Right. She'll be 67 in December. All right. But yeah, I'll I'll keep you guys updated. Follow me on social media. Listen, clearly, that lady, it's keeping her up nights. I see that. Yeah. Let me take a break here. If you want to send a text for anything, 35192. You can leave messages if you're listening to us on the iHeartRadio app. You want to email, hit me up there at alancockshow.com. The Alan Cox Show on 100.7 WMMS. And everywhere you go on our free iHeartRadio app. This football season, bet with house money with the Bucs.